Hello everybody, this is something new for my channel. I've never done a voiceover video, so go ahead and let me know in the comment section below if you like this type of video. Um, I think it was <laughs> a bit of a necessity to do a video this way because I have got quite a story to tell. Um, I don't think it's even possible to tell the story in line with the clips that I took of what happened um, just because things happened so quick uh, and there's really a lot of information to tell behind it so I'm gonna go ahead and start the whole story now you guys can watch some wonderful footage of me packing my bags and I will go ahead and get started <laughs> telling you all the tea <laughs> so I was originally supposed to take a bus to Frankfurt which would take 11 hours, but it was going to be a direct bus from a bus station in Milan to the Frankfurt airport. Then I had an eight hour layover in Frankfurt airport before I needed to board my plane. So about five hours before I needed to check my bags because it's an international flight. They tell you to be there three hours early. That flight was going to take 11 hours and then I was going to arrive in Portland and I live almost to Canada in Washington and so going to Portland was really not ideal. I had the only cheap ticket at the time was to Portland. That's funny. There's my um, roommate Eleonora in the video. She's excited to be on YouTube so shout out. Um, anyways, so my grandma was going to pick me up from Portland, take me a couple hours north into Washington to her RV where she lives. I was going to stay the night on their little sofa bed that's in their RV until the morning when I could take a train that would go north and my mom would be able to pick me up from a town that that train comes to and then it would be an hour home from there, assuming that we didn't stop for like groceries or any anything along the way. In total, that trip was going to take 54 hours of my life. <laughs> it doesn't seem like that when you look at it on a calendar because of the time difference, because I would take off at two and I land at four, and so I almost have a half a day that just disappears. But for me, being in transit was gonna be 54 hours. Based on how I'm talking to you guys, I think you guys can realize that that did not happen because um, I ended up spending five hours on the side of an Italian freeway broken down. My bus, I rode with Flixbus, which I've ridden with a million and one times before, and they've always been wonderful. I've ri I took my entire backpacking Italy trip with Flixbus, and there is a bunch of blog posts about it if you want to know exactly how I did it and where I went and all that kind of stuff. You can check out my blog, which will be in the description box. Um, and also there is a post about exactly why I'm moving home also will be linked in the description box below in case you're wondering exactly why I'm going through all of this hassle. Um, anyways, so yes, I have two suitcases um they were supposed to be 46 kilos total together and they were 52 <laughs> um spoiler alert the guy in frankfurt did not even charge me for overages which was so nice of him after all of the chaos i'm about to tell you like it's so nice of him that he didn't charge me for baggage overages even though i was so grossly over um yeah, so I have these two bags and a carry-on in a backpack, like a purse backpack. Um, it's a lot for one person. They're really heavy. I am able to stack my carry-on on top of my suitcase with this little bungee cord thing that I got. Uh, however, it doesn't roll very well. And the suitcase itself, the wheels don't roll very good. They don't stay straight. Um, and especially not if the suitcase is really heavy. So, not only do I kind of lose my handle when I stack my carry-on on top of the suitcase, but it also becomes heavier, and so it just, it's really a pain. So, <clears throat> here you can see my room all empty. 
I'm really sad to be leaving Italy and to leave Milan and to leave my roommates. I really got along with them so well and they're so sweet and so yeah, they will be missed. <laughs> and now you can see me. It doesn't look like a struggle, but I promise you, I am begging. Those suitcases are so heavy and there's three flights of stairs to get down. So that was fun. Anyway, so I almost was actually late to my bus, and at this point, I really wish that I had been late, because if I had missed my bus, then I would have gotten on another bus that did not break down, um, and would have made my original flight. So, I guess I shouldn't have worked against fate at that point to try and make my bus on time, and should have just gone with it, but you never know until it's too late. Anyways, so, um, my bus arrived on time to the bus station, but then five or ten minutes outside of the city, we were not even to the toll booth to be on the actual highway, we broke down. And there was a belt broken, which you will see here just in a second, um... The toilet was closed. We were all on the side of the highway, busy highway, children and pregnant women included, standing on the side of the highway for three hours. Then they loaded us up onto the bus again and crawled our way over to a rest area for two more hours. Um, nobody could leave because taxis and Ubers and stuff couldn't find us um, or were unwilling to go on the highway or the toll because of the toll. Eventually, police officers showed up, and they did nothing, And uh, but they called an ambulance to bring us water, at least, so we had cold water after some hours. Um, and then, finally, they brought us back to the train station and dumped us there with no direction, no new bus, nothing other than to tell us to call Flixbus customer service. Well, there was a hundred people trying to call Flixbus service from our bus alone. And so people were on hold for 40 minutes without getting through. I was on hold for almost 50 minutes and never got through to a person. And so we were just stranded there. And I apologize now, you guys. I'm just getting over a cold, which is why it's been so long for this video to come out in the first place, but I'm a little sniffy, if you haven't noticed. Anyways, so... We got dropped at 11 p.m. at the bus station. At that point, I wouldn't be able to get back home to my flat if I wanted to because the transportation was going to be closed. So we all started making calls. I was able to rebook my Condor flight for the next day and it flew into Seattle and not Portland. So that was nice and it only cost I don't, almost $200 more, but in terms of airplane rebookings that was incredible i don't know how i got away with it so cheap if the guy took pity on my story and waived some fees or what but um yeah i booked a new bus ticket with flixbus because that's the only bus that went from that station and so i hopped on a flixbus had a layover in zurich in switzerland and then I was in Frankfurt. I dropped my bags off in the Frankfurt luggage storage, my big ones, and was so, so thankful that I had a friend, Matia, in Frankfurt who let me come stay with her. So I went into the city and stayed with her, slept in a real bed, and she came with me back to the airport and... Oh, I cannot thank her enough. She's a lifesaver. The whole rest of the journey was so much better having a real night's sleep before getting on the plane. In fact, I actually hadn't, didn't really have any problems with jet lag or anything when I arrived. I was like, yeah, let's go grocery shopping. Let's, let's do some errands. You know, I was not like dead like I thought I would be or like I surely would have been if I slept in the airport that night. The airplane itself was not uneventful. We ended up being an hour late because uh, we didn't get our engine checks done in time to be able to claim our spot on the runway. And so they had to reassign us a spot on the runway, which was an hour later. So we took off an hour late. 
Um, supposedly, we made some of that time up in the air, flying faster than we were scheduled to fly, uh, but we still landed pretty late. My customs and all that kind of stuff went fine, as they always do. I think Seattle's really chill for customs and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and I was reunited with my mama, and then we were we drove home and got some groceries, like I said, and yeah, I've been home now for about a week. It was not like coming home, it was like moving into a new room again, because I was only there for a short time during Christmas, where I was able to like actually unpack it, because my parents moved, so Christmas was the first time that I had ever been to this house, it was a completely other side of the state, like nine hours away from where they lived before, so that was really fun. I guess the last thing that's kind of funny is that I actually spent the same amount of time in transit with the huge bus breakdown incident as I would have before because instead of staying the night in Portland I stayed the night in Frankfurt so everything worked out in the end it's just a bit of a crazy story there's a lot of details that I kind of glossed over the the stay on the side of the highway was definitely not fun uh and kind of really in the realm of gross negligence but anyways That is my story on my move back home. Like I said, if you want to find out why I moved back home, check out my blog post. It will be linked in the description box below. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a like. Um, If you like my channel, go ahead and subscribe. Uh, Follow me on all of my social media. I am most active on Instagram. If that's your thing, definitely give me a follow there. I post almost every day. And yeah, looking forward to new and exciting things to come. Hope you all enjoyed and see you later.